How are we all? Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Welcome to Smashing English. Thank you for joining me today. We're going to have a live pronunciation lesson. We're going to be looking at RP, which is received pronunciation. Now, you do not need to speak like this if you want to be good at English, okay? It's not a requirement. You don't need to have this accent if you want to be good at English, not at all. But a lot of my students are very interested in it and they want to learn it for fun. And if you really want to sound very clear when you're talking to people, a lot of these sounds will be very useful for you. So you don't have to, but it's really useful if you want to be as clear as possible. Hello, everybody. Hi, Paul. Hello, Firaz. Hello, Mohammed. Hello, Mehmet. We've got everyone here. Hi, Vazu. Uh, Jane from Thailand. Hello from Poland. We've got everybody here. This is very, very, very exciting. So how are we going to do this today? We're going to look at some tongue twisters. Now tongue twisters are a great way to practice specific sounds and um, you can practice them very easily. They're normally quite short so you can do them five times a day, and you'll be great. Um, so we're going to look at those and in between those, if you've got any questions, let me know in the chat. If you've got any questions about English, any questions about pronunciation, any questions at all, just keep sending them to me and I will have a look. So hello everybody. We've got Colombia, Sao Paulo, Brazil, Timmy Lee, thank you for being a fan for so long. This is so very exciting. So shall we get started, everybody? So just to confirm, we are looking at received pronunciation. Received pronunciation is like newsreader voice. So good afternoon, welcome to the news at 10. It's that kind of standard voice. Um, hello from Portugal, hello from Macedonia. Let's get right into it, shall we? So what do we have? We've got our first two, um, tongue twisters here. Now I've tried to colour code them with what sound I want to focus on for each tongue twister. So this first tongue twister I have made a lot of the sounds red. Now I'm going to give you a little test. Have a read of that. Do you know what that red sound is? It's all the same. So all of those red letters, they are the same sound. Do you know what it is? What do you think? Is it an er uh sound? Is it an oo uh sound? Is it an Solia says a schwa. Well done. Yes, it is a schwa sound. That red one is what we call a schwa. That's how you spell it like that. Schwa, schwa, schwa. So a schwa is completely neutral. So I don't want your tongue to be doing anything. I don't want your teeth to be doing anything. I don't want your lips to be doing anything. Do it with me. You ready? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so nothing's happening. It's not oo, ah, uh, e, it's just uh. Okay, so can we put that uh sound into this uh, tongue twister here? Now, some of them might be obvious. For example, Peter. Can you hear that uh? Peter, Peter. This one, Piper, Piper. However, this one might be less obvious. You might be thinking this is a, but actually in RP, it's more common to say a. Uh. So picked a, uh. peck, hmm, now that's a bit weird. Why have we got a schwa there? Because in connected speech, in flowing speech, a lot of the time we say of. Picked a peck of, picked a peck of pickled, peck of, 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 of. If it's not connected, we say of. If it's, but if it's connected, if it's flowing, we go of. So have a listen to how I say this. You ready? So we're going to go. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Picked a peck of pickled peppers. Can you hear all of those schwas? Now, when we've got a schwa followed by an S, it's actually more of an uz sound. Peppers, peppers peppers. So I want you to say this with me. You ready? I'll say it first and then you're going to say it after me. You ready? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled 
Buzz. You go. Amazing, amazing. Are you dropping the jaw or are you going peppers? If your lips are going out, peppers, or if you're saying Peter Piper, that's American, which is fine. But if you want to speak with an RP English accent, it's got to be Peter Piper, Picter. Okay, let's carry on. So see if you can hear the schwa's when I do it. A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. Okay, try that with me. Ready? A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. Let's carry on. Next one. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the the, not the? So when the is followed by a consonant, we say the. We only say the if it's followed by a vowel. So we would say, uh, we would say the orange because it's a vowel. But because it's a consonant, we say the, the peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked. Okay, is that, does that make sense? Can you hear the schwa that I'm doing? It's really useful to do it in front of a mirror so that you can uh, see if your lips are going Peter Piper. So do it in front of a mirror. I'm going to read the whole thing. I want you to try and do it with me. And I want you to also pay attention to these p sounds. I want it to be sharp. There is no point doing these tongue twisters if you do not pronounce all of the sounds. It's a bit like doing an exercise, like lifting a weight, but doing it like this. Like you're not really doing it properly. When you lift a weight, you have to do it with correct form. When you do a tongue twister, you have to do it with correct form. So I want to hear these I want to hear them. Listen to how I do it. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. You can hear all the sounds. So let's do it all together. Are you ready? Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, Where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Okay, try practicing that once a day and you will notice an improvement. I'm sure you will. Do we have any questions here? Hello, we've got someone from Uzbekistan. How exciting. Do we have any questions? Someone says, I'm from Vietnam. I'm studying abroad in Australia and I'm having trouble understanding the Aussie accent. It's a very tricky accent. I mean, I would just say, listen to as many podcasts you can um, of Australian people. Hamish and Andy are fantastic. Hamish and Andy, they do a podcast and they're Australian. If you listen to them once a day or as often as you can, it will become easier, I promise. Hello, someone from Algeria, my goodness. How are you? I'm doing all right, thank you. Uh, so keep sending your questions in. I will try to reply to them as much as I can. Okay, so what have we got? Um, next one. Now, the sound that we're going to look at here is the T, obviously. Now, what you will hear with a lot of British people is we will say Betty Botter <laughs> and we will put a glottal in that T. We'll go Betty Botter. Uh, like that. Now, people do speak like this. However, if you have a thick accent from somewhere else, let's say you have a very thick Spanish accent, if you start going Betty Botter, it's going to make your accent very confusing because you will have sounds from your region of Spain and then also Betty and it might just get very confusing. So try not to learn this. Try not to learn Betty Botter bought some butter because unless you've got a perfect natural sounding um, UK accent, it's going to sound weird. So I want every time you see this dark T, the dark blue, I want you to go T. I want to hear that T. -t, -t. So let's just try this. Betty Botter. Betty Botter. I want to hear the, the air coming out. T -t -t. Now this one where it's light blue here, bought, 
This is slightly different because it's about the linking. So when we've got this T followed by a consonant in the next word, we can't say Betty Botter bought some. Because if you do a T there, it's going to be hard to say the next word. So instead what we do is Betty Botter bought some. So we go to say the T, we go bought, but we don't release it. So if I said bought, I'm releasing it, but I don't do that. I get my tongue in the position. It's almost like someone stops me halfway through. So I go bought, my tongue is ready. I'm ready to do the T, but it never gets released. So we go bought some. So you get in the position, then release it. Betty Botter bought some. So hold the T, don't release it, then go to some. That's how you do a T to a consonant link. Otherwise, you have to stop your flow. Otherwise, you have to say, Betty Botter bought some, and that's too hard. So it should be, Betty Botter bought some, bought some. You can hear that little stop in the sound. Just try that with me, you ready? Bought some. Get in the position, bought some. Lovely. Then butter, back to normal. I've got the same thing again, but she. So get the T ready, but she. But she said the butter's bitter. I want this T to be like a karate chop. Betty butter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. Harsh. Let's try that all together. Here we go. Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. Lovely. Let's carry on. Now, this one is the end of the word, but there is a vowel straight after it. So we're going to link it together and say, put it, put it, because there's another vowel after here. If I put it in, if I put it in, in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. Butter bit of better butter will make my batter better. So I'm going to do that really slowly. I want you to try to read it with me. So I'll read one line and then I want you to read it straight after me. Okay, so I'll read one line, you do it after me. Here we go. Betty Bot bought some butter. But she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. Good. Oh, we did the next one, didn't we? Good. But a bit of better butter will make my batter better. Good job. Let's do the last part. So she bought some better butter. Try that. Good job. Better than the bitter butter. And it made her batter better. Good job. So we're going to do this all the way through and I want your main focus to be that t -t -t. Imagine you're a drum. T -t 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 you can even do that with me now. You ready? Play some drums. Here we go. That's the kind of T I want. So let's do it all the way through. You ready? Attack those T's. Attack, attack, attack. Here we go. Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my batter better. So she bought some better butter, 
better than the bitter butter. And it made her batter better. Good job! Well done, well done. Keep practicing. You are not supposed to be perfect yet, okay? You will take a bit of practice before it feels really secure. So practice it, practice it, practice it. Um, what have we got? Hello, I'm Brazilian. My husband is English from Hull. I would like to listen to a podcast from Hull. Do you know of any that you recommend? Oh my goodness. Um, not that I can think of. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say to Bez, who is watching this and is in the chat button, I'm going to say, Bez, can you go away and find some Hull celebrity, some Hull podcast that you can recommend to uh, Marie's? So we should have some recommendations for you in just a second. Um, oh, great. Look at that. Bez has already done it. He's so quick. So All Told in a Hull Accent by Jane Rhodes is apparently a good podcast. Well done. Um, what do we got? <laughs> Ildar says, what's going on? <laughs> so what we're looking at, if you, have, if you have just joined us, we are looking at some tongue twisters to try to get our mouth doing some different shapes, making our voice as clear as possible. Uh, and we're going towards a received pronunciation English accent. But even if you don't want to speak with that accent, this is really good just to get your mouth nice and flexible using all these different sounds. Hello. Okay, let's go to the next one then. What do we have? What do we have? Okay, we've got... Oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm really sorry. This is... a. Uh, it's tough. It's tough. It is tough, this one. Number three. <laughs> so... Number three is so tricky because all of these words look almost identical. So what I've done is I've put them in different colours. So if it's the same colour, it's the same sound. If it's a different colour, it's not the same sound. So here we've got a red sound. Oh, what's a red sound? It's a schwa. So these one, this one, and this one is a schwa. So we say, how, okay, will you tell me? How do we say that word if that red sound is a schwa? Remember, a schwa is just a, a, a. So how do we say that? What do you think? If you said thorough, not quite, because o is not a schwa. A is a schwa. So we say thorough, thorough, a, a, thorough. Okay, and then this word is Thoroughly, 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 thoroughly. Okay, so these two are schwas. How do we say this word? What do we think? It's this. I had a mm. So it's not red, so it's not a schwa. It's thought. Forward. Thought. Push those lips out and push it forward. Thought. 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 Okay, so we've got the thorough thought, the thorough thought, okay, is thoroughly thought. So the thorough thought is thoroughly thought. And thought, same again, what's this sound? So it's not purple, it's not red, so it's got to be something new. Through, through and through. So the whole thing should sound like this. The thorough thought is thoroughly thought and thought through and through. Try it again. The thorough thought is thoroughly thought and thought through and through. This is a great demonstration for why colours are so useful um, because uh, colours can really help tell your brain it's something different. It's something different because without these colours, you might just read them all the same. You might go, a thorough thought is thoroughly thought, throw and throw. But they're different. They're very different. The thorough thought is thoroughly thought and thought through and through. Practice it. Practice it. Okay, number four. Now, this one is tricky because of that R sound, which people really struggle with. So I know um, a lot of Spanish speakers uh, have a lot of rolled R's. They will say R, R, R. 
Um, I know a lot of German speakers would say R, Rory, like that. That was awful. Uh, and French people as well would go Rory. Um, so R's are really tricky. So the best way to do an R is this. I want you to imagine that you've got, your tongue is like a bowl. Your tongue is a little bowl and uh, your tongue is going to curl up at the front. Like that. Uh, it's going to curl up and the sides of your tongue will curl up as well. And your lips are going to push forward. R -r -r -r. So the tongue is curling upwards. R -r 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 -r. Okay, so it's boring. There shouldn't be any r -r 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 -r. That's way too exciting for what we're doing. This is a boring sound. R -r -r -r. Like a lion. R -r. Okay, so let's try these. Uh, let's try this. So we've got Rory. Oh, I've just realized I didn't color coordinate that one. How terrible of me. So we've got Rory, the warrior, and Roger, the warrior, were reared wrongly in a rural brewery. It's really tricky. It's really tricky. Now, someone tell me, someone in the comments, this R is not pink, and this R is not pink, and this R is not pink, and this R is not pink. So why have I told you, why have I made some of them pink and some of them not? What's the difference? What's the difference between this R and this R? What's the difference? Someone tell me in the comments. What is the difference between... Um, oh, someone told me I didn't colour the schwa in four. Oh yeah, because I was focusing on a different sound in that one. That wasn't... I wasn't focusing on the schwa in that one. So what's the difference between the first R in Roger and the second R in Roger? Tracy, yes, the second one is not pronounced. Good job. So the second one is not pronounced. We don't say Roger in an RP accent. We don't say Roger. We don't say warrior. We don't say warrior. We drop them. So if the R is at the end of a word, we don't say it. Or like this, reared. Now you might be thinking, hold on a second. R is followed by a vowel here. So we say it, re. But E is also here. So why don't we say this R? That's because this E is silent. We don't really say it. We don't go rear red. We say rid, rid. So actually the R comes before a consonant sound. It's all about the sound rather than the spelling. Try not to look too much at the spelling uh, because it's all about the sound. So let's try it again. You ready? Get ready to make this R shape. R, R, R. Here we go. Rory the warrior and Roger the warrior were reared wrongly in a rural brewery. If you're struggling with this R sound, I want you to make it longer. So I want you to go Rory. So keep doing it until you find it. Don't just half do it and say, oh, I did an R, I think. Find it. Make sure you've got it. Rory. Do it so slowly until you get it. Practice, practice, practice. Okay, let's see if we've got any questions. Have we got any questions here? Um, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Um, Firaz says he's buying a book of English in use. I hope that makes me better, but there are problems in accent. Yeah, books are fantastic for English, but they won't help you much with accent, really. The best way to learn it is to do it, to actually make the sounds with your mouth. If you never make those sounds, if you never sound a bit silly, you've got to sound a bit silly, otherwise... You won't learn anything. Um, uh, what else have we got? Oh, yeah. Marie's is saying she's she's watching Hull Raisers. Hull Raisers is good if you want to listen to the Hull accent. Keep, um, keep sending me any questions you have and I will reply to them. Hello, Anil. Hello. Nice to meet you. Let's go back to our next tongue twister. la di da di da Okay, we've got, oh, we've got the uh, the TH sound, the TH. Now, someone tell me, in this orange TH, is it 
voiced, like or is it unvoiced, like someone tell me, is it voiced or is it unvoiced? What do you think? Someone tell me in the comments. Unvoiced or voiced? What kind of TH do we need here? Mohammed says unvoiced. BJ Ray says unvoiced. Slark says unvoiced. Tanya says unvoiced. Lauren says unvoiced. Yes, it's unvoiced. So we don't put any buzz on there. Otherwise, it would sound like he threw three three throws, which isn't quite right. So we don't put any voice on there. So your throat, when you make this, you shouldn't feel any buzz. So put your hand here and I want you to just go. Now go. Can you feel that buzz in there? So if it's voiced, it means you've got voice in there. Ah, there's a buzz. If it's unvoiced, there's no buzz. So let's try it then. We've got, stick the tongue out. Here we go. He threw three free throws. So let's extend that TH. Let's make it three seconds long. I want every TH to be three seconds long. Here we go. He threw three free the rows. Even if you think your TH is fantastic, I still want you to do that. I still want you to stretch it out because it'll help you just isolate that sound so you are confident that you've got it. Stretch it out, okay? Is everyone good with that one? Is that all good? Um, what else we got? Uh, oh, someone says next time make a video on complex grammar. It's coming, it's coming. I'm, we're making lots of videos at the moment so it'll be coming up, don't worry. Um, Oh, someone said, good question here. Someone said, um, do you have any tips to improve stress and intonation? And is it necessary to learn English phonetic alphabet to improve and get an RP accent? If so, how should I start? Amy, it completely depends on how you learn. It, I don't have a technical mind at all. I was terrible at maths. I was terrible at science. My brain is not technical. So when we, when I went to drama school to learn how to be an actor, we were taught the phonetic alphabet because uh, we were taught that it would help us learn how to do accents for different characters. I didn't learn a thing when I was doing that um, because it felt too technical. Like saying, okay, ah, eh, ooh, oh. I didn't learn a thing from that. How I learned accents was just by listening and copying. So I would listen, listen, listen. I would copy. I would do an impression of that person. So I think the first accent I ever learned to do was Cockney because there was a character on television and she used to talk like that. So she'd be like, am I bothered? I can't believe you'd say that. Like that's how she spoke. And I remember doing an impression of her and just by listening and copying, I did the accent. But that's me. You might be sitting there thinking, I can't copy people. I, I just can't do it. So you might be more technically minded. If you're very good at logic, science, maths, learn the phonetic alphabet. Sure, learn it because it might help you just decode that, um, that accent. But it's completely up to how you learn. You need to know how you learn. Um, and with stress and intonation, it's tricky. There are books and there are methods that teach you stress and intonation, but I truly think the best way to learn that is to immerse yourself in the accent, to talk to native speakers in an online class, to listen to podcasts, to watch TV shows. That's the most natural way to do it. Um, but there are ways to do it online. Um, Hello, everybody. Um, I like the way you teach. Thank you so much, Lamech. Thank you. OK, let's go to our next one. Now, I wrote this tongue twister because all of my students struggle with this. Number six, all of my students struggle with this. So again, as you can see, I don't know why I'm just highlighting everything there. I'm trying to put my little mouse there. There we go. OK, so as you can see, we've got that purple sound again. Now, if you remember our purple sound, what is it? What was our purple sound up here? 
thought, or. So that is walk. It's exactly the same sound as thought. Now this is why spelling doesn't make sense because the spelling is completely different. Okay, the spelling is completely different. We've got O-U-G-H-T, A, A-L-K. Ridiculous, ridiculous. So instead of thinking about the spelling, I want you to just think about the sound. Or, or, or. Now put a W in front of it. War, war, war. Literally, W-A-R, war. I'm going to war. Same thing, war. And then just put a cut on the end. Walk, walk, walk. So when you think about that word, I want you to imagine walking forward. The sound goes forward like walk. It's, it's a forward sound. Then we've got this sound. It's not the same. Can you see how this one is grey and that one is purple? So for this one, we say were, were. It's a thinking sound like uh, 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 like that. Uh, it's thinking. You're, there's no R in there. Don't put an R in it. Uh, uh, uh. If you're doing American, work. But we're not. We're doing RP. So we go were. Drop the chin. Were. Were. <laughs> I just choked on something. Were. Were. Take your finger. Take your finger. Put it on your chin and go were, were, were. Good job. No R. Then just go k from your throat. You ready? Work, work, work. Lovely. Very good. Work. Um, so the two together should be I walk to work. I walk to work. Lovely. Because my Work is walkable. My work is walkable. Let's try the whole thing. You ready? I walk, wrong one, sorry. I walk to work because my work is walkable. One more time. Uh, do the actions with me. Do the actions. Ready? I walk to work because my work is walkable. There you go. Well done. Number seven is about the o, 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 the o sound, o. So it's like uh, the lips are slightly rounded, a bit like if you had lip injections. <laughs> like, oh, look, I've had a do, 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 lip injections. O, o, o. It's that kind of shape. O, 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 o. And it goes like this. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper copper coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. Try it with me. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper copper coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. Speed it up. Try to say every single sound in there. Don't get mushy. I don't want to hear if I can have a proper cup of coffee. If I can't, attack it. You ready? If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. Faster. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper cup of coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. Practice it. You'll get there eventually. I promise. Um, Godspeed said, I spit by mistake. Good. If you are spitting, that's a good sign. It means you are doing it with attack. You are doing it with strong diction. Sorry, I was just checking if my mic was on. It is. Um, you, it means correct. So spitting is good. If you see the best actors on stage, they spit because they're saying words clearly. Um, what else have we got? John Wang says, hooray. I agree. Oh, okay. Great question. Someone has just said, do we pronounce walk the same way we pronounce woke? So you're asking about these two questions, these two words, these two words. So do we pronounce those the same? No, because the first one is or, 
walk. This one is o, o, o. Can you see the difference in my mouth shape? So we've got walk, walk, and then o, o, o. So they're different shapes. We've got walk and woke, woke. So similar, but it's not quite the same. Great question. I love questions like that. Fabulous. Okay, we're nearly at the end, guys. We've only got three more to do. You're doing a fantastic job. So we've got next one. The purple sound again. Now, the reason I wanted to do this one was because, again, it's spelt completely differently. We have or, or, or. That or is always spelled in a crazy way. So it's not sow. You don't round it like ooh. You carry on and go or. So try it with me. I have a saw that can saw as much as a saw can saw. When a saw can saw as much as a saw can saw. So, I forgot to underline that one. Now, why, how on earth do we link this sound? Got a W on the end. Do we say saw as? Do we say, I have a saw that can saw as much as a saw can saw? Or do we say, uh, I have a saw that can saw as much as a saw can saw? No. I want you to think not about the spelling, Take away the spelling. I want you to think about the sound. What sound are you making? Saw. It's almost like door or floor or war or four. And all of those sounds end with an R. So it's actually very close to an R ending word. It's exactly the same as when we do this word, saw, which ends in an R sound. So what we do is we put a linking R in there. We say... Uh, I have a saw that can saw as much as a saw can saw when a saw can saw as much as a saw can saw. Try it with me. Here we go. I have a saw that can saw as much as a saw can saw when a saw can saw as much as a saw can saw. Well done. You're doing a great job. Any other questions we've got? Any other questions? What do we got? Um, hi from Tokyo, my goodness. Someone watching from Bangladesh. This is very exciting. So many people. How many viewers have we got? 180? This is doing fabulously. Lovely. I hope you're all speaking along with me and sounding ridiculous in your bedrooms or in your living rooms or wherever you're watching this because if you want to work on accent, you need to sound a bit silly for a bit. That's the, that's the key. Okay, we've only got two more to do. And one of them, one of them, we've already done this sound. So this is that r again, r, r. So your tongue makes a bowl, r. So try that with me, find it, r. Make your tongue go upwards. So it's like r, r, r. Lips out, r, r, r. Round and round. Try that, round and round round and round the rugged rocks the rugged rocks the ragged rascal ran try it faster round and round the rugged rocks the ragged rascal ran if you find tongue twisters hard if you make it more of a rap with a beat to it it's a lot easier Round and round the rugged rocks, the ragged rascal ran. If you can have like a beat to it, it does help. Okay, the last one, it doesn't have a specific sound I want to focus on. This last one is all about diction. So it's all about getting your mouth around the words. So before we do the last one, before we do number 10, I want you to imagine that you've just taken a piece of chewing gum, massive piece of chewing gum, you're going to put it in your mouth and we are going to chew together for 10 seconds. The biggest chew you can, like this. Ready? 10 seconds. Here we go. Okay, chewing gum. 
Now that might be the most ridiculous uh, piece of footage that exists of me, but I don't care. I'm here to teach you, okay? Another thing I want you to do is I want you to take your tongue and I want you to roll it around the inside of your lips like this. Like that. We're going to do it six times one way and six times the other way. You ready? Here we go. Now, that is probably going to hurt a bit. It probably hurts your jaw, but it's a lovely warm up to get your lips really nice and alive and buzzing. It means that when you say things, it can have a bit more pop to it. Okay. Another exercise, if you want it, is I want you to say p t k like that. So you're going to do a like that, and we're gonna do it as many times as we can, getting faster. You ready? That's the goal. Then you can do it with B, D, and G. Okay, now why am I getting you to make all these ridiculous sounds? It's all because of diction. And a lot of the time um, when I'm teaching students, their pronunciation is great. You know, they, they don't really care about having a particular accent and that's fine. But something about their pronunciation makes it a little bit tricky to understand and it's all just diction it's just getting your mouth a bit more alive and not being sloppy with it we don't want to talk we want to be clear really clear so if you can do those exercises if you can do the chewing it'll just help warm up your mouth before you speak so let's try this now so we've got a box of biscuits a box of Biscuits. I want to hear all of those sounds. A box of biscuits. A box of mixed biscuits. A box of mixed biscuits. And a biscuit mixer. So I want you to imagine you're saying this to somebody who uh, is a bit deaf. They can't really hear you. You've got to be so clear. Here we go. A box of biscuits. A box of mixed biscuits. And a biscuit mixer. A box of biscuits. A box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. Practice, 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 practice. I think, you know, if you want to aim for an, a received pronunciation accent, great, go for it. But if you don't want to, the main thing I want you to take away from this video is diction. Tongue twisters can be fantastic for diction. So whatever accent you have, I just want it to be clear when you're speaking English because you might be using the most fantastic vocabulary, great grammar, but if you're not pronouncing things clearly, people might not understand you. Um, so try to do, you've got 10 tongue twisters here. Um, what I will do is I will um, show you them one more time. So if you want to take a screenshot of this video, you can. So we've got number one, we've got number two, number three and four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10. So if you can do these, if you can do all of these once a day, you'll notice a huge improvement, but make sure you're doing them correctly. Don't just go, don't just go, okay, um, Peter Piper picks a peck of pickled peppers, uh, Peter Piper picks a peck That's not gonna help you at all, at all. You have to properly do it. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. You have to do it correctly. If you do it correctly, with energy, pronouncing all of the sounds, you will notice a huge improvement. I promise, I promise. Do you have any questions? Oh, Mehmet says, I think the last one is so easy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, well done you, Mehmet. How about before we finish, I will read all of them one more time. How about that? We'll read it together, all of them together. You ready? Or you can just listen to me if you want. If you don't want to do it, you can just listen to me. But let's try it together. So we're going to go straight through. Here we go. This is all about the schwa. Remember, this one's about the schwa. And the p. 
Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Betty Botter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter. But a bit of better butter will make my batter better. So she bought some better butter, better than the bitter butter, and it made her batter better. Three. The thorough thought is thoroughly thought and thought through and through. Rory the warrior and Roger the warrior were reared wrongly in a rural brewery. He threw three free throws. I walk to work because my work is walkable. If I can't have a proper cup of coffee in a proper copper coffee pot, I'll have a cup of tea. I have a saw that can saw as much as a saw can saw when a saw can saw as much as a saw can saw. Round and round the rugged rocks the ragged rascal ran. A box of biscuits, a box of mixed biscuits and a biscuit mixer. Well done everybody, that is fantastic work. You have just done some really good work there. You should be so, so proud of yourself. Um, do you have any questions? Cheese says, nice lesson. Thank you so much, Cheese. I love your name. Uh, great name. Someone says, I'm a biscuit lover. Me too. I love biscuits. Really love biscuits. Tracy said, number seven was hardest for me. That's interesting. What was number seven? If I can't have a proper cup of coffee, it's tricky. It's hard because you have to say proper cup of coffee is tricky. That is a hard one. They're all hard. So if you found this really difficult, don't worry. It's supposed to be hard. It's supposed to be hard. Uh, well done, everybody. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hi from Hong Kong. My goodness. So many people. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Did you learn something? That's all that matters. If you learned something and it was useful, my job is done. My job is done. Um, we are, um, uh, any movie that uses RP accents, oh, anything that was made in Britain in the 90s, <laughs> pretty much. Things like Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, um, those kinds of films, Downton Abbey, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, what is a schwa sound? Uh, Lamech, if you, I'm gonna, this video is going to be available on YouTube. If you go back to the start, I explain everything, um, but it's going to be on uh, YouTube so you can see it. Uh, Amy Chu says, thank you. It's such a good lesson. I hope, hope to have more pronunciation practice live in the future. Yes, definitely. So you'll notice we're posting pretty much once a week. Um, I'm actually uh, going to be away from teaching for a bit because I'm doing a different job, but we're still going to try to post as often as possible. Um, but it really helps us if you share these videos, if you want to post about it on your story. Um, we are essentially a small business, really. This is about half of our income now is from uh, YouTube, which is fantastic. Um, but we are a small business. So if you enjoy these videos and if you think that they're really useful, if you could share them, post something about it on Instagram, it would mean the world to us. It would genuinely. We are not some big corporation that doesn't care. We really care. <laughs> it really matters and it really means a lot. Every time you watch, every time you like, every time you comment, it really means a lot to us. So thank you so much. Um, yeah. Um, ooh. Oh, before I go, this is a good question. Before I go, Sam Martin says, what's the difference between better and bitter? So better with an E is an E, E, E. And bitter with an I is I, I, I. So just listen to those sounds. E, I, E, I. It's very subtle. It's very subtle. That's why it's so tricky. Um, I want to take your online course. Well, keep 
tuned. There'll be lots of more online courses in the future. Thank you so much for watching this. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. Um, if you would like to follow us on Instagram, everything for that is down below in the description. Have a lovely rest of your Sunday and 